Um, so welcome to my workshop. This is my first workshop I've ever done at a conference, so I'm pretty excited. Um, so uh, we're gonna get, you know, we're gonna roll up our sleeves and, and do a little coding and best, you know, write some random stuff in JSON files later. So it's pretty exciting. Um, and I'm here to talk about uh, cross-platform voice apps uh, with Joe. I am Jeff Smith. I'm. It's not an alias. It's my actual name. Uh, <laughs> it's a uh, and uh, I'm a user experience engineer uh, here at Comcast in Philly, uh, and I work on a prototyping team. So about a year ago, we started, the team I was on started prototyping things for Alexa, for Google Home, and for some other uh, voice and chat applications. And uh, so I got pretty familiar uh, with this tooling and, and system, and uh, I think chat applications and voice applications are, are really interesting. I think they're underrated, and uh, so I thought it'd be cool to share some of what I learned uh, with you guys today by having everyone in the room who wants to follow along uh, build their own really simple uh, voice application. And so let me just add a little clarity to what I mean by these things, cross-platform, voice apps, Jovo. Um, so, you know, at a high level, you know, what is a voice app? This is my definition, it's not the dictionary one, it's just something I came up with for this talk. And uh, a voice app is like a program that ex it extends the capabilities provided by some virtual assistant platform. Uh, and we're going to build on top of that. And, and what I really am trying to clarify when I'm saying that uh, is that what, what I'm not going to do today is try to build our own machine learning NLP system, et cetera, et cetera. Like, we're going to take the NLP platform as a given from Alexa and from Google Home, and then we're going to use its services and its data structures and this and that to, to write our own application uh, so we can uh, test our own Alexa skill and our own Google Home skill. Um, and uh, so before I get too far into that, I, I, let's take a step back and say, like, why voice apps? There's a lot of reasons why you may or may not want to do make a voice app. But, um, I don't want to get into all the business and product size of it, but just to give you a sense of sizing the opportunity, uh, there's something like at least 100 million uh, Alexa-enabled devices out in the market today. And when you look at this chart, you realize like, how rapidly U.S. households have adapted virtual assistants. And it far outstrips the adoption rate of smartphones, television, and of course, internet. Um, so I think that's really interesting. There's lots of devices out there that are in people's homes, so a lot of times people don't really know what to do with them. Uh, I, use, I have several Alexa devices, and I use them all the time. Uh, so, uh, so I think there's an interesting opportunity here. There's another angle to it before. Uh, you know, at the outset of this conference, we were talking about uh, inclusivity, and uh, another compelling use case for voice user interfaces is just that voice user interfaces are accessible uh, to a lot of people who might not otherwise uh, have a good way of using a, a graphical user interface like, like the normal browser. Of course, there are technologies uh, that screen readers, etc., that make that more accessible, but it's kind of nice to just out of the box without any additional work or DAW manipulation. Um, you know, there's a, a swath of the population that can just use voice assistance and it, it's just good for them. Um, and it's also even for even for people who uh, aren't, uh, you know, blind or hard of seeing, like, so I just get eye strain sometimes, you know, like, I get headaches if I look at a screen for too long. So it's nice doing stuff like learning about the weather or traffic without having to go to my phone, or setting an alarm without having to reach for my phone first thing in the morning. Uh, and ditto with the news. So um, I think there are a lot of really interesting reasons uh, that you might want to build a, a voice app today. Um, and those are, those are just a few. Um, so uh, I talked about what the voice app is. I'm really talking about Alexa and Google Home in this, in this particular case. Um, so how do they work, though? Like, high level again, you know, uh, we have a device. We have an always listening device, like an Alexa. Um, it receives audio input. It converts it to text. It sends it to the platform API. And then that platform uh, has its own NLP. And we work with that NLP. And we tap into its REST endpoints. Uh, in our, in our code base here on the far right. And then we use that to send a response and we keep the conversation going. We do something for the user, perform a task, solve the problem, give the information. Google Home works the exact same way as Alexa, uh, in essence. Um, it's the same pipeline. So, uh, and I kind of did a little more detailed view here in case you're curious, like under the hood, we're just taking a peek under the hood, uh, which is that uh, Amazon has a transcribe service, so everything that goes into an Alexa app is what I'm trying to say here. It's also like a standalone service provided by AWS if you wish to go that route and really have a more custom, 
tailor like your own chat, uh, chat bot. There's a whole ecosystem out there that you can tap into if you don't want to use the Alexa. And I think that's pretty interesting as well. Lex and Polly. Um, so uh, I talked about uh, what is cross-platform, talking about Alexa, Google Home in this case, or Google Assistant. Uh, no, uh, I talked about uh, the opportunity. So what is Jobo? Kind of the other piece of that opening statement at the title of the talk. Uh, and Jobo is where we're going to be doing the majority of our work today. Jobo is a open source uh, conversational framework uh, built by this uh, really cool startup in Berlin. Um, they have a really excellent community, lots of feedback, uh, very active on Slack. Um, they have a plugin-based architecture and ecosystem, which is really nice. Because uh, we're going we're gonna to be using the plugins today. So everything we write is kind of grounded in a plugin. It makes it really easy to extend that platform to work with different capabilities and features you need. Um, and just to kind of illustrate the idea is that, like I said earlier, I'm on the prototyping team at Comcast. And um, for a lab week project, you know, Comcast recently launched this Xfinity Assistant on our website. And it's a cool platform. We have our own NLP. And I was able to create a plugin. Uh, for, on Jobo for our platform because it has a REST API. And within a few days, we were up and running uh, with a chat app that worked on Google, and it worked on Alexa, and then it also uh, um, worked with our own Xfinity system. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, and guys, feel free to speak up and ask questions along the way. Yeah, in the back. Uh, just in terms of the, the, the flow that you, sh the, the top level flow you showed initially, do you happen to know? Um, is the does the the device itself parse the speech into text and send text over the internet, or is it sending audio files over the internet? Um, I believe that the uh, conversion is happening on the device. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Wait, another one. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, what does NLP stand for? Oh, so good question. Uh, natural language processing. So it's a subset of machine learning. It's an area of domain within it. And what it does under the hood is it takes, it's going to take phrases uh, that a user might type or speak, and it's then going to correlate them with an intention. And that, and we'll get into, we'll see examples, because we're going to create a data file here that helps train an NLP. So we'll correlate um, phrases to an intent. And then in our Jovo app, as you'll see, we handle those intents with JavaScript. And uh, so that kind of leads into my next slide. So what are we going to do today? We're going to build a skill, right? So it's, Alexa calls them skills. Google Home calls them apps. Uh, it's going to be Node.js. This is, after all, a JavaScript conference. Uh, and it's going to be built in Jovo. We have a language model, which is that uh, aforementioned file that correlates uh, utterances and phrases and intents into, a, into an intent, and then we handle it. And uh, towards the end, time provided, and if you have an AWS account already set up, we'll deploy it to AWS Lambda. Uh, and I say that because if you don't, it can be a hassle and a pain to set up uh, AWS CLI for the first time. So that's sort of a stretch goal for anyone who happens to already have that available. When you sign up, it's not quick. You have to have a card on file. So we'll, kind of, we'll get as far as we can, um, and, but I'll leave you with the next steps. Cool. So uh, let's get started. Uh, we're gonna, we have to create a couple of accounts if you don't already have them. We're going to install a couple global packages, and then we're going to clone the repo and get into our code editors. Uh, so the first thing we need to install is, or sorry, the first thing we need to do is actually go to developer.amazon.com. If you don't have an account, you have to create one. This, uh, developer.amazon.com, is not the same as AWS. Uh, developer.amazon.com is for people who are making account, making apps on the Amazon ecosystem, which is different from consuming their web services. <clears throat> and I have, some, I have some steps to follow along. Now, I'm actually going to go log in on my uh, computer real quick and I'll change it to extend or mirror. Okay. 
So I think now you can probably, yeah, cool. All right, so over here, uh, developer, at Amazon.com. I'm going to log in with my already created account. I'm not going to create a new account because <laughs> uh, I already have one for like all of my email addresses. So uh, I'm just going to sign in. <clears throat> uh, and once you create an account, you'll, you'll get to the same portal. Uh, it looks like this. And we want to go into the Alexa skills kit on this tab up here on the top left. And that's just gonna bring us into a UI portal that lists any Alexa skills you've already created, uh, or you can go ahead and start creating a new one. And that's what we're gonna do. Yes? On Google, would setting up a project ID be the, the same thing as setting up the account on Amazon? Similar process. Uh, the Google steps are they, are they equivalent to, to get your access to their APIs? There's a similar setup involved. Okay. Uh, I, I actually have Google uh, set up an account creation in here as well, uh, but it's later on in the talk. So the strategy here is going to be build on Alexa and then extend to Google Assistant uh, because it's so easy. There's so little additional work to do that. So um, you, if, I don't want to get too far ahead of you guys. Uh, for those following along, have you been able to make a developer account or uh, you're good? Okay, so I'm going to keep moving. We're just going to create something here. I'm going to call it Hello, uh, Hello World, uh, skill name. Uh, I'm going to keep English language, uh, and it's going to be a custom skill. So we're going to do our own thing here. Uh, we're going to make it all from scratch. Now to start, we're, I'm just going to do some stuff in the UI here uh, in, the, in the browser, and then we'll move into the code editor, where uh, it really comes alive. OK, choose. Okay, cool. So we made our first skill in the developer console here uh, on Amazon. So uh, there's a lot of stuff going on the screen. It's kind of busy. Um, the only thing we're, we really need to worry about right now is we're going to create an intent, and then we're going to test it. So over here, I'm going to create an intent called Hello uh, World Intent. And once it's made, so <clears throat> going back to what I was saying earlier about a language model, so we created an intent, which means that we're expecting the user to say something to our skill. And as the name suggests, what we're looking for is a statement that's sort of like, hello world. Now, we need to teach the Amazon uh, Alexa API in NLP to expect that kind of statement. And so I'm going to put in some example phrases for it to learn on. So hello world, hello, hi, hi world. That should be enough to get started. We need to save that model, we need to save that data, and then we need to build it, it's a separate step. Uh, and you can see here that this indicates that somewhere in Amazon servers back in the cloud, uh, it's training an, uh, a model. And their models aren't from scratch, they, they come with some stuff. If you look over here on the left column, you can see things like fallback intent, cancel, help, stop. So Amazon ships uh, every app with some default intents. You can remove them, you can extend them. Uh, we're gonna leave them alone. <clears throat> and as soon as that's done, what we're gonna do is click this evaluate model option to test it out. And it looks like it's done on my side now. You see the green uh, success mark here. So now we're gonna type in an utterance. So I'm just gonna say, hello world. And the expectation here is that it's going to recognize that as an intent that we just input here on the left. And sure enough, it matched it. Cool. So we did it in the UI. Now, how do we build an app? <laughs> um, I'm going to flip back to my talk real quick to catch up. So we went through these creation steps. And now, oh, right. So before we are able to pull on repo and do any coding ourselves, we do need to install some global packages, okay? So we want to, I don't, let me zoom in, is once good? Cool. So the first thing we need to do, we need to install two CLIs. The first is the Amazon Ask CLI. So that's npm install dash g ask CLI. Uh, the Ask CLI we're not really going to be using directly. There's one thing we need to use it for, and everything else is going to be done with the Jova CLI. Um, so the Ask CLI, yeah, it's Amazon Alexa's SDK kind of uh, setup. We're going to use it to log in to our developer account on our console. 
so that when we want to send stuff to Alexa, or if we happen to want to get anything from Alexa, um, you know, the Jovo CLI will work, will be authenticated. Okay. And uh, it's moving a little slow because of the network. <laughs> but, yeah. Any questions so far? Yeah? Can you describe what fallback intent is? Oh, good question. Um, so, uh, fallback intent uh, is an intent that in our application we can e expect and handle when the user says something that the NLP doesn't recognize at all. So for example, in our Hello World app, um, we don't have any intent for I want to order pizza. So if you opened our Hello World app and you asked to order pizza, by default the skill would throw some sort of error. Alexa would say something like, I'm not sorry, I'm not sure. Um, with a fallback intent handler, you can say something like, that's a great question, or that's, a, that's an interesting idea, but we don't support that, or like, you, you try a different skill. That's what fallback is for. Um, there's another intent that's similar to fallback that we're going to use later on called unhandled. And unhandled is for when um, it's an intent that our NLP does recognize, but we're not in a place in the journey where we want to handle it. So, and you'll see that later. <coughs> okay, At my, as CLI is installed on my machine, I'm going to install the next CLI, which is the Jovo CLI. And this is the one that we're really going to, it's going to be our workhorse CLI. Um, and while that's thinking, I'm going to catch up. Oh, this is an important note. Uh, if, if you're on a Windows machine and you haven't already started the Windows build tools, um, you might need to uh, and globally install it. A lot of other NPM packages already have that under the hood uh, to support Windows, so you might already have it, but it's something to check for. <clears throat> okay, and when that's done, we're going to do ask init. Uh, on the command line itself. One and only time that we're going to use the ask CLI. And uh, if you want to get ahead while that's going, uh, you can go ahead and clone this repo. This repo is where we're going to do all the work for building our skill. And the repo has a bunch of nice uh, VS Code snippets in it to help make our life easy uh, while we're working through the workshop. I'll leave it up there in a minute for you guys to copy if anybody's copying it. Okay, I'm going to flip back to my terminal. I'm going to cheat and not type it out by hand. I'm just going to copy-paste. Oh, my, my Jova CLI is still, uh, still going, but I'm going to go ahead and clone the repo in a separate shell either way. No, you're already good. Sorry. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, you're in. You're in. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. I'm borrowing Emily's computer because mine couldn't connect to the internet. Okay. Um, all right. So... It looks like, okay, so I'm all set up with CLI, so now ask init. And the only thing we need to do here is just log into the developer account that we just made at developer.amazon.com. Excuse me, do you have these steps somewhere we can follow them on the solar page? Um, yeah, uh, so, uh, I have some of them in the repo itself. Uh, let's pop, I'll pop that up in just a second. Steps are here in the repo. If you uh, if you have the repo, uh, you will see uh, where to install. You can skip the AWS CLI, but you can see the Ask CLI install and the Jovo CLI install instructions in the README for the project. Um, and if if so, if you don't have the project URL, someone around you might. So you might want to shoulder tap one of them. 
Uh, and it's asked me if I want to link my AWS profile. As I said at the beginning, we're going to skip, we're going to defer AWS. I'm not going to link that right now. So I'm going to hit no. And now we're all logged in. So now we're authenticated on our term on our console. Uh, so now we can interact uh, with the Alexa APIs. Okay, so there's the repo again. Uh, if you need it, I'll leave it up for just a minute. I have a few tags in that repo, but we're doing everything off master, so no need to switch. Uh, which directory are we typing ask init into? Are we just right in the so, Liberty yeah, that's the, um, is it just global? It's just global, so okay. you, can, you can type that in anywhere. Did something. And that's just your Amazon developer login. We all set? See some heads shaking? Yes? Okay. All right. So now that we've cloned the repo, let's do our hello world from the project. So the first thing we're going to do is npm install. <laughs> but we can't get very far without that. So we're going to install all of our node dependencies that are listed in the package JSON. And that's going to create and populate the package locked up, Jason. Uh, so you know you're good with that step once you set the file create. There are a few commands that we're going to use uh, in the script section of the package Jason. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. The first thing I want to do is pop open this folder that says models models.enus.json, which you can see uh, if you're in VS Code, you're going to have your um, navigation uh, directory structure on the left. Now, Ian US JSON is a convention um, just from Jovo. So Jovo is a very kind of international company. They, they're very multi-language, uh, multi-lingual. So they do all their language model, uh, files by, uh, or model, language models by, by actual spoken or written language. So we're, we're going to work in the English language here. Uh, so uh, I mentioned a couple times uh, language models, right? So this is the core of how we train the NLP. We have an array of intents. And each intent is an object, and it has a name key, and it has phrases. And these phrases are how we teach the platform API, the platform NLP, uh, that these phrases means this intention. Okay? And so what we want to do is, to get started is go ahead and build that model. Jovo's language models here in the models folder is an abstraction. It's an abstraction on top of the platform language models. Google has its own way of doing language models. Uh, Amazon Alexa has its own way of doing language models. Jovo is sort of uh, a Latin, and once you're in Latin, it's easy to translate to the other languages. It's just sort of common denominator. So we do that using a, the Jovo CLI that we installed a couple minutes ago. And it looks like this. We're going to do Jovo, build, and then we're going to do dash T, which means type model. It's a language model. And dash P, we're just going to worry about Alexa right now. Alexa skill. And that'll take a minute, and that's just going to transform the JSON. And you should see a new folder on the left called Platforms, and in there you'll see Alexa skill. Those are our Alexa language model files. Mm -hmm. What was the command? Mm -hmm. uh, it's jovo build dash t model dash p Alexa skill. And what's, there's a nice shortcut as well. If you open your package JSON, you'll see that there is a npm script for building. It's build.model, and it has the exact command in there. So you can also follow along using that npm script. You do npm run build.model. I'll show you what that looks like. Build.model. And that is here. There's uh, build.model and deploy. We'll, we'll use deploy in a minute now. OK, cool. So now that we have our language model ready for Alexa with our Hello World, we're going to go ahead and deploy it. So we're going to do, uh, you can copy the deploy.model script, or I'm going to type it out. Jovo deploy dash, dash t model and dash uh, p Alexa skill. 
Cool. And that'll take a minute, because it's going to go over the network, and it's going to upload uh, that directory uh, to an Alexa REST API that then takes it and then trains our language model. Now, our language model, like we already have Hello World there, so it's not going to be very different. Um, but while that's doing uh, some work, uh, let's open up the source directory and get a feel for some of the app logic, how the Jovo app actually works. So if you go to source, app.ts. So this is actually a TypeScript product, uh, project. So I sort of lied. I said JavaScript at the beginning. It's actually TypeScript. Uh, but if you know TypeScript, you know that it just transpiles down into, into JavaScript. Uh, they look very similar. And if you've used ES6 or anything higher, ES2015 or newer, it's going to be very comfortable um, and familiar. So uh, we have, uh, I said earlier that Jovo is plugin based. If you look here, Google Assistant, FileDB, Jovo Debugger, Alexa, these different, uh, you know, if you, uh, these plugins, they're plugins, uh, they enable capabilities, right? This is what allows us to use this one platform to communicate with a bunch of different types of uh, services, like Alexa and Google Home. So uh, we're not, we don't need to touch that list. We're not going to do anything with them. Uh, the syntax is also, by the way, sort of similar, maybe if you've used Express.js before, Express Server, uh, it's got a similar nomenclature. Um, and you can see here that we have uh, set handler, right? So set handler is where the core application logic happens. So all the meat, all the work is done in a Jovo application. So uh, we have here two intents. One of them uh, might look kind of weird, and one of them might ring a bell. So hello world intent. This is a, a string, a key, uh, that is one-to-one -one with our intents that we're training our language model. And this is, this is a, a core component of how Jovo works, is you have an intent, and our app looks for a function with the same name, and you handle that intent here. This is where all the logic's done. We also have a launch intent. Now, launch is a Jovo shortcut. And what launch is, it's an abstraction so that um, when you're on Google or you're on Alexa, they always just go to launch. And that's always the entry point from your app, for your app, unless you intervene in that process. So whenever you open a skill uh, on Alexa or Google Home, you're going to be greeted with whatever is going on in the launch intent. So now that we have our language model trained and deployed, and now that we've seen a little bit about how the application works, let's build the app, uh, and then let's, let's use it. Let's see it in action. Now, we need to open up two console tabs to do this. So <clears throat> first, uh, since it's a TypeScript project, we actually do need to watch that. So, there's an NPM script to do this. It's uh, tscw. You can see in the package JSON, and all that's going to do is call the TypeScript compiler transpiler with the watch flag. So it'll watch the file system. We're going to open it, leave it running the whole time in the background. We only need to do that once. Yeah. Can you do an that Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, thanks. Thanks for calling it out. So npm run tscw. It looks like I might need to. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. Um, so now I have my TypeScript transpiler running in the background, uh, and that's just gonna, you know, that's not really gonna affect us too much, but it's like if I move that and save, it'll throw up an error and say, hey, you did something wrong. Uh, cool. So we can kind of ignore that, and you'll see also on the left now that the disk directory it exists and it's populated uh, with our JavaScript files, which again, looks very similar to what we're doing uh, already in the TypeScript files. Okay, cool. And now I'm going to open up another shell, and then now I'm going to run, I'm going to use the Jovo CLI, and we're going to run just Jovo run, simple command. What that's going to do is it's going to start an Express.js server, and it's going to give us a webhook URL from the Jovo domain, which is nice, because then we don't have to worry about SSL certs. Uh, so that'll take just a minute. There we go. And there, it's listening on port 3000. So, and there's our URL. We, I'm actually going to command click to open that URL. And we get this cool UI that's provided by Jovo. It's cool, but I'm not really going to rely on it for this talk. Uh, there are some really nifty debugging fi uh, features with it, uh, but I just want to show us the, what, uh, what's out there. Um, although it's right of the one we were on. And while that's thinking, 
What was I waiting? So it's going to ask for my microphone input. Uh, I'll, I'll warn you guys right now, if you're following along with the Alexa developer console, you're going to get some sound feedback unless you uh, turn it off or silence it. Um, I'm going to allow it, but I might, I might regret that and end up blocking it. But the first thing we're going to do, uh, this is not in developer mode. We want to turn it in developer mode. So it's in development. So we're ready to test it. And this is a really nifty tool for testing your Alexa skill. Uh, you don't need an Alexa device, you use this guy. And it gives you some really cool debug material over here uh, on the right. So the first thing we need to do is open our skill. Um, actually, before we do that, I need to make sure I'm in the right skill. So this is actually the skill I need to be in. Sorry. So make sure you're in the right skill. We created a Hello World skill, and then when we actually deployed our language model, uh, we created a new one, and it's named after the directory you're in. Uh, the way I could have avoided that is if I copied the skill ID. Um, I'll show you that later. It's a minor detail. So I'm going to go into my Liberty.js skill. Um, you can see that the Hello World intent that we deployed is there with our utterances. And now I need to add my endpoint here. Oh, it looks like it might already be there. Uh, let me make sure it's the right one. That's not from some other project. Okay. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go into test again. And let me make sure the name of the skill. So mine's called Door Game. If you look at your enus.json, at the top it says invocation. Invocation is how you start your skills. How you open it. It's important. So I'm gonna type in this box. Open door game. Hello world. What's your name? Cool. We did it. Uh, and I'll show you real quick. This is how you can also test with the microphone locally. Although I don't know where my audio input is. One of both these should work. Open door game. Hello world. What's your name? Cool. So we have our first Alexa skill. So that was, that was the easy part, but thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, we, yeah, uh, so, well, it's actually not too hard. There's just a lot of uh, steps. That's the big thing. It's a lot of steps to get this going. Okay, cool. So, we got our Hello World going. Um, but let's, let's jazz it up a little, right? Let's, it asked what our name was. So, um, let's, let's teach Alexa how to listen for our name, right? Uh, so, Let's, let's make it so we can respond to that question. So we're going to go back into our language model, right? Because we want to teach Alexa how to understand another phrase. So if we go down beneath the hello world intent, uh, we're looking for my name, right? So if you start typing no quotes or anything and you have a project clone, uh, you can just use this part complete here. I have a name, my name is intent, and I'm going to save. Now let's look at this real quick. So as with the previous skill, uh, we have an intent, we have a name, and we have phrases to train on. Something that might look a little different this time is this. Uh, does anyone want to guess what the squiggly bracket name might be? See ya. It's a variable. Yeah, it's basically a variable. So Alexa refers to them as uh, slots, and Google uh, Dialogflow refers to them as entities. They're really the same thing, they're effectively a variable. But just as you have to teach your NLP uh, what an intent is and what phrases are, we have to teach our NLP uh, what uh, slots or variables are. Uh, and in this case, we have an easy task because Amazon and Dialogflow both already understand uh, what a person's name uh, often is. Uh, or at least in our case, we're going off the uh, US first name. So this is a kind of English Western approach. There are other variables for some other languages, although uh, support for names across languages is, is sort of languishing, but it's also a monumental task. Um, so we, our, our skill knows to look for name, and it understands that name is a US name and a given name. And um, you know, fingers crossed that our names are something that Alexa uh, already has trained on. Uh, if not, then it might not work, but, um, but it, we can get pretty far with that. So, uh, that said, we now, now that we updated our language model, we need to, to build and deploy it again. 
So we're going to npm run build.model. This is the npm script. It's a shortcut for the Java build. And then we're going to deploy it again. npm run deploy.model. And that'll take a minute. While that's deploying, we need to go back to our app. Because we have a hello world intent, but we don't have an intent that can handle my name. We need to, if a user says their name, we want to be able to respond to that. And uh, I don't have a template for this one, but that's okay. We're just going to wing it here. My name is intent. It's a function. And uh, we're going to say this.tell. And I'm going to explain what tell and ask are uh, in a minute. And we're going to say hi. Uh, this dot input. So let's walk through this real quick. There are two important methods in Jovo uh, to keeping a conversation going. The ask method is a way of keeping the session alive, right? If, you're, if, if, if the user accesses your skill and they ask you, a, uh, they say something or they ask a question, you can return with another question to get clarity, to get more information from the user, maybe to get permissions. Uh, uh, the other thing we can do is just simply notify a user. We can give them a statement, we can give them information. If you ask Alexa about the weather, uh, she tells you something. She does not ask you something to keep the conversation going. Uh, so that's sort of the difference between ask and tell. And an important thing is when, the, when Alexa tells you something, uh, it actually ends the session. It ends the conversation and you exit the skill. It's an important thing to know is that a tell is always marked the end of a conversation, whereas an ask will keep it going. And this works the same on Alexa and Google Home. Okay, so deployed our language model, and uh, we need to now restart the Jovo server because there's a new file in memory. But it only takes a moment, and the webhook URL is the same. Okay, so I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to open door game. Hello world. What's your name? And I'm going to say Jeff. There was a problem with the requested skills response. Uh oh. <laughs> Something broke. That's it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. I'm like on top of my laptop here. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to try again. I'm going to open door again. Hello, world. What's your name? Is it Jeff? Hi, Jeff. How are you? And there we are. We trained our language model. We trained our language model uh, to recognize a new type of intent, and we're able to respond. Now, one more piece of information before we keep going, and that is that uh, how did we get the name? Well, you we sort of see the answer already. So, Jovo API has a number of fields uh, on the other side of this dollar sign, and because we're using uh, because there are type definitions under the hood, we get these nifty shortcuts. There are a lot of different things here, but what we care about right now is inputs. Any slot or any variable uh, or any entity that comes to our skill from the platform NLP is going to be under inputs. And it's simply going to be the name of whatever that skill is called in your language model. So for us, it's color or it's name. And uh, if it was capitalized, it's case sensitive, right? Or if there are underscores, you would have to include underscores. So this is something to be mindful of. The object has four properties, ID, key, name, value. Uh, we, you'll almost always care about name or value. Uh, and, and that's what we're using here. So that's great. But let's do something a little different. Let's shift gears now. And let's get out of Hello World and build an app that's a little more involved. So we're actually going to get rid of these three intents, and we're going to go to our language model and do something completely different. And it's really easy to update your language model this way. So we're going to play a sort of, sort of a game. It's not really a game, 
But what we're going to do is, is work on a skill that gives a user an option of walking through a red door or a blue door. And they're going to be slightly different experiences. So what we want to do now is train the bot on, how, on what the red door is and what the blue door is. And we have VS Code snippets to help uh, train our model quickly. So they're going to look very similar. Um, oh, you know what? If you want to autocomplete, it's weird. You have to um, get rid of the comma. It might. Hmm. There we go. OK. So we have two uh, intents now in our language model, the blue door intent and the red door intent. And they're very similar types of phrases. I want to go through the blue door, or I want to go through the red door. I choose the blue door, or I choose the red door. So let's go back uh, to an empty terminal that's not being used. And let's build and, and deploy our model again. npm run build. And then when it's done, we're going to deploy. Deploy.model. And then in our app, yes, we're going to need new handlers, because we have a new app. But every app starts with a launch intent. So we fortunately have an autocomplete there as well, a VS Code snippet. Uh, if you just type in launch and press enter, it'll fill out this area. Now, as I just talked about, uh, there's two types of Jovo methods for continuing conversation. We have ask and tell. And here, we're going to uh, we're going to ask the launch, and we're going to going to call tell uh, on the handlers. Cool. So when the app launches, what we expect is this statement. Do you either want to go through the blue door or the red door? And if you pick the blue door, we'll just acknowledge, hey, you went through the blue door. The same for the red. And we're going to restart our Jibber web server. And we're going to go back to the browser. We're going to open the door game, and hopefully we'll get a different response. Do you either go through the blue door or through the red door? Perfect. And now, we're going to say red door. You chose to go through the red door. Cool. Now, uh, let's do this again. Do you either go through the blue door or through the red door? You chose to go through the blue door. Uh-oh, something went wrong there. Two things went wrong. So first, I said the green door. There isn't a green door. There's only a blue door and a red door. But second, the NLP didn't even recognize that the green door was green. It just thought it was blue. So, you know, let's first uh, go back and uh, do some validation. Was, was that an unhandled intent? Oh, good question. So we can actually get uh, figure out what the green was. door. What was the green door an unhandled intent? Yeah. So uh, great question. So we can actually look through this debug debugger uh, into the right here on the browser, and when we do, we'll realize we'll notice that it was an intent request, and it was detected as the blue door intent, which is a mistake. So our NLP actually got confused. And that's an important lesson here. Um, the NLP uh, can easily get confused when you have two intents that have very similar phrases that they trained on. So there's an opportunity here uh, to improve this language model, which you're already getting at. And that is, uh, can we uh, simplify this by using one intent? And the answer is yes. So we're going to get rid of the blue door and red door intent and replace it with an enter door intent. And now the door color is going to be a variable or a slot like we just had for a user's name. I'm going to go train, and I'm going to go build and deploy that model again. Cool. And while that's running, we need a new intent handler. So if we do enter door, there's several versions here. I'm just going to take the one that says enter door. And that should work the same way that our previous uh, function worked. It should be exactly the same. Although it is building. But while that's doing that, I'm going to restart my Java webhook server. 
because we changed our source files. And the Express server needs to reload them. Cool. And our language model deployed. So if I go back here, I'm going to say open door game. There should be the same responses. Do you either go through the blue door or through the red door? You chose to go through the blue door. Cool. That's great. But what happens, you know, if, if uh, can we reproduce an error there? Do you either go through the blue door or through the red door? What if I say stupid? You chose to go through the stupid door. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and that's fun and that's cool. But it, it's, it's actually kind of a problem because there is no stupid door in this case. We only have to go nice doors. So, if, if you do, we can, we can make this better, right? So, if you go, this was interdoor step two. So, if you're using, following along using the VS Code snippets, step two will complete to this. And what we've done here is that we've thrown in a check for whether the input value really is blue or red. And this is just sort of a basic example uh, of how you can do input validation in Jovo. You just inspect the type. And you can really use any kind of validation tool that you could use for any other application. Whether it be browser-based, as long as it doesn't rely on the DOM, you can use even a browser-based validation tool. It's just looking at the value. Oh. So, now let's open door game. Do you either go through the blue door or through the red door? And now if we say stupid, please choose either the blue door or the red door. There are no stupid doors, uh, only blue and red ones. You chose to go okay. through the blue door. And we're back where we started. That's good. Okay. So, let's keep going. So, were you able to go through? Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, just curious, like, if people say things that are more than just the blue door, like, I would like to go through the blue door. How would you react to that? Uh, it depends on how well you train your model. So, we have only a few simple utterances here. Um, that's something that you need to just test and get a feel for. The way you can test and get a feel for it, you can use this tool here, uh, and, we, and we can just do that. Or uh, in the build tab, there's the model evaluator, and you can try it there as well. So I guess my question is, for these other instances, mm -hmm. um, do we need to, I mean, can I just pick a piece of it, or do I have to like completely spell out the entire sentence? Um, in my experience, you don't necessarily need to spell out the entire thing. The NLP is usually pretty smart going in. Um, but it is something to test, and it's importantly, it's something to test with users. You need to get users in a room and see how do they actually interact with voice commands, uh, and that's really a matter, of, that's an experience design question where it's understanding your customers. Uh, but usually it is, they're fairly robust. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, Let's catch up over here because we went pretty. We actually got through several steps. So we added a blue door and a red door, and we uh, tested on Amazon Alexa. And now we want to add yes and no intents. This is our inter door, and this is our happy place where we reduced some dis, uh, we reduced some redundancy. And, and now we want to go add yes and no intents. Okay, so. Going back to our language model, because this isn't the end of the game. We're not just going through a door. We want to confirm it. So we have, uh, we're going to add another step to the game uh, where we ask people uh, a question. And we'll ask them the question in just a moment. But first, we're going to get our new intents in. So we have yes and no. Now, you might be wondering, like, do we really need to teach a yes and no? Like, aren't these NLPs really smart? Alexa ships with stop and cancel. Uh, and help, but it doesn't, what about yes and no? That's really basic. So it turns out Amazon does ship with yes or no intents. Uh, Google does not. And since Jovo is a cross-platform framework, we need to help Google catch up with Amazon in this regard. <laughs> I would say in general, the Google NLP is actually much more sophisticated and smart than the Amazon's, but this is, this is one area we're building on Google's a little, languages a little. Uh, so, we're going to add some new intents for yes or no. Once again, I'm going to kick off the train and deploy of the model. And while that's going on, I'm going to add yes and no handlers. 
and no. Okay, great. And this, I'm gonna update now. This is a little overwhelming here, so I'm just going to walk you guys through what I just updated here using the code template that's in the project. So we added a yes or no intent, and as you can imagine, how the conversation is going to go now is when we open the door, we ask, um, you know, what do you want to go through, red or blue? And we're going to pick one, and we're going to do the same validation we did before. We're going to look if it's blue, we're going to look if it's red, and if it's not, we're going to, we're going to ask them to pick one. Uh, but or what we're also going to do is ask them a question. So now we have a little bit of a story, right? So if it's blue, you chose to go through the blue door. There's a dark, long floor, and suddenly you hear a sound from a room at the end of it. Do you follow the sound? So now we're putting users in a position where we want them to play along. And we're looking for a yes or no question. Or we're asking a yes or no question, so we're looking for a yes or no answer. Which is why we now have yes or no here. Or so you chose yes, or you chose no. So now that those are in our language model and deployed, and now that they are in our app, we're going to Jovo run again, restart that webhook to load the latest JavaScript files in the disk directory, and we're going to open door game. Do you either go through the blue door or through the red door? So it's a familiar story so far. And I'm going to choose the blue door. And there's a typo, but I don't actually think the NLP will be okay with that. Please choose either the blue door or the red door. I was wrong. <laughs> blue door. You chose to go through the blue door. There is a dark, long floor. Suddenly, you hear a sound from a room at the end of it. Do you want to follow the sound? Yes. There was a problem with the requested skills uh -oh. response. All right, let's figure out what went wrong. Uh, it said an invalid response, uh, speech was null. So, this.ask, hmm, the joys of live coding. Yes. Oh, we forgot, okay, this is good, this is good. So there's another step that we have to take. So yes and no intents, you see we're using, we have our custom one, and we have the Amazon one here that we're using on Amazon. But you might notice that we are handling this, we're handling yes intent right here, right? But there's a problem. We told our NLP, we told Jovo to use Amazon.yes intent. So there's two ways we can work around this. We can do this and handle this, but in my opinion, that's kind of ugly. And actually, it would be, because it has a weird name, it would actually look like this. If you're using strings keys, it would look like that. I think that's kind of ugly, and I think it's redundant. And fortunately, the developers of Jovo uh, thought the same. And so they give us this cool tool called Intent Map. Intent Map is in our config.ts file. Whenever a Jovo app starts, it loads config.ts and it uses the configuration here to inform how the application will run. And in particular, we have intent map. We can modify our intent map now so that Amazon.yes intent is always redirected to our yes intent right here. So I'm going to rerun the server because that doesn't affect the language model. That's purely on the code side. It's purely on Jovo's side. And uh, we're going to open the skill again and see what happens. Open door game. Do you either go through the blue door or through the red door? I'm going to say red door this time. You chose to go through the red door. You find yourself in a small room with I'm only one door. Alexa and a... say yes. You chose yes. And there we are. So now we're able to go through the red door. Yes. Is there a way to just like jump in to a certain point in the flow? Like right now you're having to go through the whole thing of saying I want to open the skill, I want to do this thing, I want to do this thing. Is there ever a point where you can like deep link? That's a good question. Um, when I started working on these like over a year ago, uh, you really couldn't. Um, and I would say that while they do have some deep linking capabilities, in general you have to go through the flow. And that can be really frustrating from a developer perspective, but um, 
from a product perspective, it sort of makes sense uh, that you don't necessarily want users to miss steps. Uh, and the reason why is because in a conversation, as you're moving through these intents, you, you're effectively able to do like validation. And while we're doing the validation for something innocent, like, str like string name red or blue, sometimes it can be important things about a user. Um, so the way, now uh, that said, there isn't a way to necessarily jump to an intent per se. But could you you can, you, you're, so this is a nice segue to what I'm going to talk about next. Uh, which is uh, Jovo uh, Steets and Jovo Routing. So Jovo has a way to make that a little bit easier. Um, and I'll show you. So we added the yes and no's. We use the intent map just now, uh, which collapsed these two platform differences into one. And now we're going to use states. So um, what are states? States are a really important concept in a Jovo uh, app. And uh, they're sort of like UI router states, and they help solve a lot of uh, tricky developer problems. And what you can see, what the states effectively do is, uh, is they create a context so that Blue Door uh, can sort of encapsulate uh, its own version of yes or no, and same thing with Red Door. So for example, today, in our current app structure, what we're looking at here, if a user says yes or a user says no, there's no way of knowing whether the, their yes or no came from the blue door or the red door. We just know that they're in yes or no. And states give us a way around that. And they make routing a lot easier. Okay, so what we want to do now is get rid of our yes and no's because we're going to create some states. The states don't affect the language model at all. They're purely a code construct. So we have a red door state. And as you can see here, there's our yes and no that's specific to red door. And we have a blue door state as well. It's just the same. Now, these states are here. They're, they're great, they're cool. There's a problem, which is that uh, we no longer have yes or no intents on the top level of our app. If a user says let yes or no, we don't have a way to get them to that handler because that hand, those handlers, these handlers, are now encapsulated within a state, right? They don't exist at the top level. And in a way, that's good. If you open the app up, we don't expect the user to say yes or no, right? We don't like if we ask like, do you want to go through the blue door? Like, do you want to go through the blue door or the red door? Saying no isn't really an utterance we expect. So we protected ourselves. We have actually made the experience more aligned with what we want it to be by pushing these intent handlers down into the state. But how do we get into the states when we want to? Well, there's two ways. One way we actually saw in the very beginning when we started with Hello World where we had something that looked like this on launch. We said this dot to uh, intent, and we could go something like no intent, right? Uh, or before, this was hello world intent. Jovo has another related API called to state intent. And in this case, this is where the TypeScript definitions come in handy. It's two strings, so we want the intent, red, door, state. And then the intent, which would be yes intent, right? That's one example. There's a, even a more clever way we can do this in our code that's more elegant, which is we can anticipate a state the next time the user answers, right? So if we go through the blue door, then we expect a yes or no from the blue door state the next time the user responds. And we can do this using the follow-up state. So if the color is blue, we go to blue door state next time. So that's the follow-up state. We're going to do the same thing here, and it's going to be red door state. OK, I'm going to restart my app. And now we're going to check it out. We're going to open door game. Do you either go through the blue door or through the red door? Blue door, we're going to say. You chose to go through the blue door. There is a dark, long floor. Suddenly, we're going to cut off. Blue door, you chose yes. Cool. So we ended up in the so we did the main steps 
that we wanted to walk through uh, on this code base. We've got our interaction model. Um, I'm curious to know uh, what I did. Oh, there it is. Step five in model before. So we've done it all in Alexa. So now what I want to do with the remaining time, we have uh, around 20 minutes, uh, which should be enough. Uh, but we want to try to get it working on the Google Assistant. So um, there are steps. You have to create a, a, an account here as well. Uh, and Google's platform is called Dialogflow. It actually used to be API.ai, really great startup. Uh, Google bought them, and then they greatly increased all the prices. Uh, <laughs> So there's a whole setup flow here, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't believe you need a card on file to do that, but um, I am going to log in over here, not there, here. Uh, Dialogflow.com. Okay, I think that's it. Um, and there are a couple things you need to get a skill on Dialogflow. Um, so I, I actually already have right here uh, a skill that I set up before, and, but I'm going to go through the steps uh, anyway. So in order to get on Dialogflow, you need these two pieces of information. You need your product, project ID, you need your service account. Um, whereas uh, with Alexa, we use the Ask CLI to authenticate on the server, Google does it with these credential files and product, uh, project IDs. So you don't need to install their CLI, but you do need to uh, download some, some uh, files here, or at least copy some strings. So, that happens in project.js. Project.js is like config.js or config.ts, but whereas config.ts is for the running Java application, the running Node app, uh, project.js is, is for the CLI, it's for the Java CLI. So, what we need here uh, is, you know, I actually think I have a template for this. Let me, uh, there we go, that helps. I'm just going to mix that and uh, comment those out. We're not using those right now. But we need to use these skills here. In order to use our skill on Google, Dialog, on their platform, we need the project ID. So there's my project ID. The other thing I need, and this is a little more annoying, is a key file. And they make it kind of easy for you, but it's also kind of annoying. So when you're in Dialogflow, in your project settings, the general tab, the service account here has a key file. So we're going to go look at our service account. It's a dialog flow account. We want to get a key file for it. But before we do that, we need to make sure it has the right permissions. So this is a confusing... Uh, oh, okay, cool. So this is what we need. It's a little bit of a confusing UI. But you see here, this is our service account. Uh, which is, is what's giving us programmatic access to the APIs. It's what our Node app assumes this role, and with these roles, it gets certain permissions. And these permissions will allow us to work on, on Google Dialogflow. And we just need this API admin permission, and it's already here for us, which is great. And since we have that, we can now go back into service accounts, uh, and we need to get our key file for it. So, um, where did I, let me uh, look back to the top. So it's somewhere buried in the UI. It's creating it, creating, creating, there we go. Okay, let's go back here. And I am, um, here it is. How do I get my key? This is always a Kind of a painful step. Service accounts. Oh, here it is. There it is. Okay, cool. So in the service accounts tab and the Google platform over here, this is the one we want. And we're going to say create key and we're going to grab JSON. You can use this P12 as well, uh, but JSON is just going to be a lot easier. So I'm going to open it. I'm curious what is going to try to open it. Oh, Xcode's trying to open it. Um, I'm not going to open Xcode, sorry. Um, so, but uh, I need to go back to the downloads. Yeah, that's okay. I'm going to see it in Finder, and I'm going to just, actually, under, can I not drop it right here? You might have to come back. 
command. Yeah. Hold out. Command and drag it. Oh, okay. Oh, did it? It didn't like that either. Did you have Well, it didn't drop. Uh, hmm. Uh, I'll try one more time here. No. Okay. So. Do you want me to sorry, show you where the final folder is? Well, um, I can also copy the contents and copy it. Okay. So. I'm just going to drag it into the project. There's a new file, move.json. I'm just going to copy the contents and then I'm just uh, going to uh, copy the file name afterwards. Okay. There we go. Move.json. Close that. And then I need to get the name of it. Well, actually, I don't need to get the name of it. So, we have it now. And our key file is in foo.json. I do not believe it's going to check the name of that file against the project ID, but uh, we'll find out in a second. So, now that we have the permissions and credentials we need, we want to do uh, Jobo build and deploy. But we're not going to use the shortcut we used before, because before, and you might recall, it was just for Alexa skill. And in, <laughs> this time, we want it to also be for Dialogflow. So, the platforms folder, you now see Google Action as well as Alexa. Uh, and now we want to deploy to Dialogflow. Uh, actually, there is no deployment step. We need to make sure that our skill has uh, everything it needs here. Let's go back to Dialogflow. Um, okay, it's thinking. And uh, oh, and we don't have any intents, so that's curious. Uh, oh wait, I, I remember. So here's what we want to do: Java deploy dash t model and dash p Google action. Sorry, we do want to deploy. We're not deploying code. We're de deploying a model. Not the property URL. In the Hmm. Interesting. Let me see if we really do need this file name. Time. So this time it's actually deploying to Alexa and Google Home. So, or, or to Dialogflow, I should say. Now, uh, you might be a little confused. Uh, what, what is Dialogflow? What does it have to do with, uh, with Google Actions, right? Uh, I've been using them interchangeably. They're technically separate, although they're tightly related. Dialogflow is merely the NLP engine for the Google Assistant. And the Google Assistant platform is what powers not only the Google Assistant phone app, but it's also what powers the Google Home. And now one of the interesting takeaways because of that shared platform is that whenever you build a skill for the Google Home, it'll also work without any additional effort on the Google Phone app, the Google Assistant Phone app. So that's actually pretty powerful. Um, uh, so there's another curious area here. I'm going to take a look at my slides and see if anything jumps out at me uh, as to what might be the cause. And uh, nothing really does. So. Um, so, uh, I'm. Flash. Let's 
So let's try this. Copy this. So we need to, we need to get our intents in dialog flow. But one thing we can do in the meantime is that we, we need to have our webhook here for fulfillment. Uh, and what this does is whenever we talk to Google, it'll go to our webhook the same way Alexa goes to our webhook uh, for our Alexa skill. Uh, that's enabled, and it looks like it'll just save automatically. Yep. Or no, the save button is down here. Okay, let's make sure we save that. And uh, just to prove the idea out. So, I'm not sure why we can't deploy it at the moment, but let's just train it. So this is a very similar UI to Alexa's, and uh, we want fulfillment to come from our webhook. And uh, let's, let's see what happens. This might not work, but no. Okay. Well, we need to upload our language model somehow, and uh, it's curiously not working. Well, there's our hello world intent. Okay. Anyway, we're nearing the end. Uh, I'm going to continue debugging it, but uh, we got through the meat of the content I wanted to show you. Uh, there's something particular, you know, going wrong on my command line, but long story short, is you we went through this setup of how to build an Alexa app, how we did it with the Jogo framework. We use states, we use the ask method to continue a conversation, we use tell to end it. We had some slots, we had some validation. We used the input property of the skill, uh, uh, sorry, the input property of the Jovo API uh, to get the variables that users are saying. Um, and we made our little you know, short adventure game. So, uh, and we used the Jovo CLI to push our models up and to run our local server. Uh, I will do a list. We can take a quick look at what Lambda looks like. So um, you know, it's it's really quite simple. The the Jovo CLI, in addition to having uh, the ability to run a local Express server, has a, a nice deploy as well uh, to Amazon Lambda, AWS Lambda. So if you were to do that, there are just a couple steps. You log into. Uh, let me see. Uh, console. You log into your Amazon console. Uh, <coughs> this is if you have an account already. And there are just a couple steps here. So Jovo supports deploying to Lambda. Uh, you can't deploy to other endpoints using Jovo, although you could happily uh, run your, sa uh, your application um, in webhook mode in a Docker container or something else. But uh, we would just go to Lambda here. Here we go. I was thinking. Uh, if you haven't used Lambda before, it's a serverless environment. So you install a node. Uh, it, it, it's a node environment. You can get one out of the box. You can also use Python or, or what have you. Uh, you don't have to do any kind of server infrastructure work. You don't have to worry about auto scaling, and provisioning, and uh, you know uh, throttling. There's a UI for that. But um, so I've already made a function here, but you just create it with one uh, one function. Uh, this very low lift. You just uh, would go in here and you say create function. Actually, let's just go ahead and do it. Create function. And it's going to be from scratch. And we're going to say, I'm going to say, call it door game. It's going to run node at 10.x. There's an 8. version as well. And uh, let's see. Uh, I think we can just create a new role, basic command definitions. That looks good. We don't need to do any fancy work there. 
Sorry, the Wi-Fi is uh, lagging a little bit. If you were getting this one in the Google Assistant environment, would Firebase launch it be able to work similarly? Yep. So Jova has a plugin to do it all in Firebase as well. It even has one for, uh, it even supports deploying to Azure. So it, your bases are all covered. Um, there's a feature I didn't get to talk about much in this talk that I think is also kind of interesting that I'll just point out, is Jovo has what's called FileDB. So by default, Jovo's data, database is just a JSON file. And it'll save a session ID here, and it'll save some basic user ID uh, across sessions um, while you're working. And that's a really powerful tool out of the box. But you might be thinking like, yeah, FileDB is not the best way to do a database. You can run into you know, issues with reads and writes and too many people accessing. Um, it's really good for debugging, but um, Jovo actually has database plugins that you can swap them in and out for. Uh, they all have the same API. Uh, you can use Firebase uh, Firestore. You can use DynamoDB, uh, MySQL, and so on. So there's lots of different options there. Jovo also has CMS plugins, which is really great. We created this, we're going to add a trigger, and it's going to be Alexa, and we're just going to add it. And we can even get the skill ID in order to do that. And we get it back here. And there it is. Thinking, it's thinking. There's our skill ID. I'm going to copy it. Paste. It's doing some verification. And uh, as soon as it's done thinking, we can we can run. But it's really long. <laughs> so while that's doing its thing, I'm going to open up another Lambda window and try to get the ID, see if I can let these guys race and see if I can get the AR in the Lambda function. So everything in Amazon, like everything, has what's called an ARN, which is a like unique identifier. And we need this to deploy our skill to Lambda. And that is something that also goes in Project JS because again, it's something that's related to the CLI. It's something out of the app, not inside the app. Once we give it this ARN, uh, we can also deploy it. So the skill ID that I just copied a moment ago here, I'm actually just gonna not finish that process. My skill ID will go here for validation. And I have an ask profile. Um, and I think it's just default on this computer. I'm not entirely sure about that, but we'll see. Because I'm borrowing a computer. Uh, and with that, we would just do this. Uh, Jovo. Oh, wait, we need to uh, build the project. So, oop, it should already be built. Yep, it's already built in disk. There it is. And then if we open our package JSON, we have a script for, de for build and deploy. So we're going to uh, the Jovo project ships with the shortcuts in PM run bundle. It's just going to zip up your project. And then we're going to use npm run deploy dash code. And we're going to use, I'm, well, I don't know if the AWCLI is set up here. But anyway, was there a question in the back? Or? Okay. Anyway, um, we're basically out of time. I don't think the AWS. CLI is set up, or at least set up with them. Yeah, it's not set up on this machine, uh, and it's, a, it's not something I can quickly sh set up. But if it was, we would just run that deploy.code function, it would go right to Lambda. Uh, so no longer, you're no longer relying on your local machine running that webhook. You'll just have your application out in production in the wild, hosted on Lambda. It's very quick and snappy, it's a lightweight environment, uh, and it just works, it just works like magic. Uh, so uh, with with the previso uh, of AWS CLI not on this machine and with a little bit of mystery around dialogue flow, uh, you guys have really have everything you need now to build a cross-platform uh, voice app using Jovo. Yeah? Your presentation slides, is there a link? Can we view them online? I, um, I can send them out uh, afterwards. Can you just put um, 
a link in the readme of the repo. Project can push it up. If yeah. You just, yeah, if you just put it in the readme of the repo for this thing, that would be awesome. Thank yeah, you. Yes, I'll do that for sure. 100%. Perfect. Thanks so much. I'll do it right after this talk. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. But that's it. We're basically out of time. And uh, thanks everyone.